Anybody familiar with the term pivot? <laughs> of course, being in ministry, Pastor Brenda, we're, we're used to pivoting. But I, I also believe even while we're worshiping, God begins, to, the Holy Spirit <laughs> begins to whisper to me that this morning can be a reflection even on your own life. That there's many of us in a season right now where there are, you're in a season with an unexpected pivot. <laughs> that you can wake up one day and the way that you have chosen, something could come your way and you have to do what? Pivot. So I find it very interesting because last week we talked about that our Sundays are going to look a little bit different. <laughs> and I said, you know what, God, maybe, maybe months down the road I can lay out a good vision plan to my staff and, and then we can come to you guys and lay out another vision and you'll be bought in and, and we can go on this path. But God said, no, 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 this Sunday. <laughs> I don't know what plan you got, Pastor Anthony, but this Sunday is going to look a little bit different. And as you, you can go ahead and, and, and have your seats and because what I would normally do in this time, come on, they, they teach you well and to handle the transition well and exhort through everything and set the worship team up. And you can, you can try to iron out all of the details when you're walking with God, but sometimes God wants you just to pivot and choose his way. See, a lot of us, we can be in a season of our life right now where there, there, there's a buffet of options out there. Come on, go to corral. <laughs> and there's a lot of many different options out there, but when you're walking with God, there's only one way. So now we can be in a, a season of our life where we're trying to figure out which way to take, but the more I walk with Jesus, Jesus is just not the way, he's the person of the way. And the more we rest with the person, the person is Jesus. Matter of fact, can I give you some scripture family? Jesus said it this way, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And out of response of that, it was actually Thomas who asked the question. Come on, we know Thomas, right? Doubting Thomas. A lot of us have a, lot, a little bit of doubting Thomas in us in this season of our life. We're, 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 we're confused on what the next may look like. We're, we're confused on is this the right option? Is this the right door? Is this the right way that we should walk in? And, and Jesus was responding to Thomas right here when he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And, and here's what I want to say as we begin to shift into this message. And, and I'm just going to see how the Holy Spirit is really going to preach this message because I believe God has you right where he wants you at. And as you choose his way, this is your time to actually cross over into the very thing that God is calling you to do. Perhaps you're in a season right now where there's a struggle to choose the right way. I believe God is gracing you right there. Maybe you're in a season of life where you don't understand what the next may look like. I believe God is gracing you and giving you the strength of highlighting, illuminating the pathway of your next step. You may not know what your staircase may look like, but you will know how your next step will look like. When we walk with God, he shows us what our next step may be. When you walk with God, you, you may not know what the end of the tunnel may be, but I believe in the family, I believe you, my daughter, I mean, my, my, my sister, my brother, the more you walk with God and dive into his word, his word say he will light a path on your feet, he'll light a path, and you will know what your next step may look like. I just turn to your neighbor right now and just say crossover. Celebration, I believe we're in a crossover season. 
I believe that this month of March, as we leading up to Passion Sunday, I, I, I really believe even as I was studying and saying, God, when Easter's right around the corner, we, we should be talking more about Jesus and, and diving into the scriptures. And God just keeps taking me back to Joshua. Last week, we preached a message in Deuteronomy 34. I said, God, why you got me in Deuteronomy? Shouldn't I be talking about Jesus and, and maybe the donkey and leading up to Easter? That's, that's the normality what pastors should do. He said, no, Anthony, you're in a Deuteronomy 34 type of season. And, and, and you're getting ready to step into a Joshua season. I need you to release that word to, 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 to the church because they're in. Joshua 1 is right around the corner, but they have to learn how to handle a Deuteronomy 34. And, and the, that what I love about Joshua text, come on somebody, in order to read Joshua, jo the book of Joshua is a transitional book. The book of Joshua is, is for a set of people who've been in the wilderness. Oh, I'm speaking to the right people right now. I feel your Holy Spirit. And the book of Joshua is for some people who've been in the wilderness and they're trying to make it to the promised land. The book of Joshua is for a set of people who've been in the wilderness and they were being fed by God in an unpredictable way, but God fed them, but now God is speaking more to them, but some things are dying and some things are rising up. Am I speaking to the right people in here right now? Oh, come on, go with me, family. We're, we're on a pivot Sunday right now. You, you got to go with me because I know where you are. I know what you're walking into. I know what you're crossing over into. And the more that we dive into this word, I want you to, I want you to grab your word and turn to Joshua 1. And we're going to read 1 through 5. We tried to get to this text last week, but the Holy Spirit just wrecked our, uh, wrecked our whole service. <laughs> I believe he's wrecking it even right now. You okay, family? Yeah. Can I take my time a little bit? Joshua 1, verse 1 through 5, it says, After the death, death of Moses, the Lord's servant, the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant. Moses, my servant is dead. Now you, come on, point to yourself, say, now you. And all the people prepare to cross over the Jordan to the land I am giving the Israelites. I have given you every place where the sole of your foot threads, my gosh. Just as I promised Moses, your territory will be formed from the wilderness and the Lebanon to the great river, the Euphrates River, all the land of the Hittites, come on, and west to the Mediterranean Sea. No one, somebody say no one. No one. Oh, come on, speak to yourself, no one. No one. Come on, not this depression, no one. Come on, somebody. Come on, you, you, you can't just read the Bible in this season. You got to read the Bible. Amen. You, you got to get into the scriptures. And when you read it, I don't see the Euphrates no more. I don't see the Mediterranean Sea no more. I don't see the enemies that the Bible is talking about. I see my enemies. Come on. Amen. So when he says no one can stand against you, no one can come against my family. Come on, somebody. Talk back to me. Depression can't hold me back. Death can't hold me back. The stress that I'm going through can't hold me back. Me thinking I'm not enough. Nothing, no one can stand between me and my father and what God has for me and my family. You got to prophesy and encourage yourself in this season and say, no one devil, not this Goliath that's in my life. No one can come against what God has for me. It is time to cross over. I've been in the wilderness way too long. It is time to march forward and claim what is rightfully mine. No one can stand against you as long as you live. I will be with you just as I was with Moses. I will not leave you or abandon you. I want to go back to verse 2 because as I was reading, I told you, you can't just read the Bible in the season, family. You got to read the Bible and you got to let the scriptures pop out to you. And it says, now you and all the people prepare to cross over. Somebody say prepare. prepare. Here's what God has been speaking to me this week. As me and Pastor Brenda, come on, we were, we were on a Stairmaster. Come on, we were working out. Come on. 
We was working out and, and the Holy Spirit whispered to me. He said, Anthony, I need you to tell the people that they are in a meal prep type of season. Meal prep, l l l turn to your name and say meal prep. Meal prep. Meal prep type of season. Here's what I mean by that. If you're so nutritional value, you understand what meal prep is all about. You understand in order to get to your next goal and what you're trying to reach for, there's some things that you got to be prepping for now in order to achieve with, with the, the result or the goal that you're trying to go over. See, when it comes to meal prep, come on, preach this to me, Pastor Brennan, because you was preaching it to me. When it looks at meal prep, there's some things that you got to choose and there's some things that you got you to gotta disregard. You can't just grab anything when you're meal prepping. You can't just, because whatever you're meal prepping, all oh, this word is coming to me, you got to be careful what you consume in this season, family. Choose your ingredients wisely. Choose what you're eating wisely in this season, because if you choose the wrong ingredients, the wrong ingredients can actually drain you. Come on, somebody. The wrong ingredients can actually get you a little bit sluggish. The wrong ingredients can actually get you to a part in your life where you are fatigued. And I'm not talking about your energy, but your fatigue in your mind, your fatigue in your heart. Do you have the right ingredients to move forward in the things of God? You got the meal prep wisely in this season. Every single thing that you're going through is a preparation for what God is pushing you and molding you to step into. This season is not a season of waste. This is a season of preparation. That God has you in a boot camp type of season because what God is placing in front of you outweighs what you can even think. And the picture is bigger than you, my friend. But you are a Joshua and it's time to rise up. You are a Joshua and it's time to rise up. So can I say it this way, family? If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. What does your preparation look like right now? What does the ingredients in your life look like right now? Because here's what meal prep does, family. It helps you stay the course. If you don't prep your meals correctly, you will find yourself choosing buffets or you'll find yourself staying and eating those large fries at Mickey D's. Even though they can be pleasing to the eye, they're not pleasing to your stomach. So if you choose the wrong ingredients in this season, it may be pleasing to your eye, but there's some consequences that you're going to walk in later. See, the wrong ingredients can keep me from walking into everything that God wants me to possess in my life. But if we take time and choose our ingredients correctly, choose your ingredients correctly, you got the meal prep. So as we shift into this heavenly, heavenly Father, we love you, we honor you. We thank you for your word even right now. Meal prep. That our ingredients that you have given us is fascinating ingredients that you have brought our way, Lord God, to cross over into more. We honor you. We thank you even for this moment where we have to pivot a little bit to sit at your feet. Speak to us, Heavenly Father. Encourage us. Challenge us. But also give us your grace and your strength to cross over. We decrease right now so that you can increase and we come as, as your sons and daughters and we sit at your feet. Speak to us in a mighty, mighty way. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Come on, somebody shout amen. 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 Family, I, 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 as I dive into this word a little bit, I was thinking earlier this week, come on, me and Pastor Brown, we're some, we're some huge foodies. Any, any, any foodies in here? Come on, talk back to me, foodies. Come on, come on, come on, talk back to me. But Pastor Brent is on a whole nother level, though. I mean, when we go on vacation, come on, she's on Instagram, she's on Yelp. I mean, I think she has the chef personal number. That's how much FBI research she is doing at every single restaurant that we attend because she wants to know, is this place worth trying? So she's watching your Instagram, she, she's scrolling. Why? Because we are very picky of what we like. 
So when we go to the restaurant and, and to be honest, I, I, I'm kind of modeling and coming after her now because now I'm getting very picky. And to be honest, the reason why I'm getting very picky because Pastor Brenda bought me a Traeger grill last, last year. And, 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 and these, these, I'm something like a chef. I, I, I really feel it. I, I feel the anointing, uh, babe, that I'm something, just something. I went to the school of hard knocks of culinary and I'm something. So when I, when I go to the restaurant, I'm very judgmental of baby back ribs. Because I, I just, I, maybe it's just me, I think I reached a certain level where I can judge your baby back ribs. <laughs> and if your baby back ribs doesn't taste like my baby back ribs, I'm judging you from the head to the toe. I got to meet the chef because I can tell if you just threw these baby back ribs on the stove or not, or if they went through a process of preparation. See, 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 there's certain restaurants that you attend, you can tell that this meat has been simmering, this, this meat has been marinated, there, there's been some stuff, where even when the season to get down to the bone, my gosh. I love that chef. Oh, you, you, you on your thing. You, you've been doing it, but there's some places you go, you understand, they, they just put salt and pepper and that ain't enough. See, I understand because I understand the season of preparation. See, sometimes things taste better when they go through a season of preparation. See, sometimes when things go through a season of, of preparation, it tastes better to the mouth. And I just wonder, do we understand the value of preparation? I, I just wonder because we can't have a crock pot appetite with a microwave preparation. We desire things that's been simmering, but we have a microwave preparation. We want things very quick, but God that doesn't have you in a quick season right now. God has you in a crock pot season. And there's some things that's been simmering on the stove. Come on, Pastor Brenda, those, those greens that you cooked yet, uh, yesterday, they, they've been simmering on low, but they taste good when we ate them at nighttime. And I just believe that's a word for somebody in here right now. You're, you're trying to grab hold of the next, but God is trying to grab hold of the now. And God is grabbing you hold of your heart because if, if he can get your heart right, if he can get your mind right, and he's trying to train you how to release some old things so that you can grab hold of some new things. And sometimes you got to sit long enough with him so that you can identify what needs to go and what needs to stay. But in order to make room for the new, you got to learn how to remove the old. And the only way to uh, remove the old, we got to sit on the stove long enough. That God doesn't want you to just to move into a microwave, but he wants to move you into a crock pot. So, so perhaps, perhaps, I wrote this down in my notes, perhaps they're struggling to cross over. Perhaps they're struggling to grab hold of the new. And I believe this, my, my, my friend, is that God is giving you a word in this season on how to get unstuck. Maybe you're unstuck in your mind. Maybe you're un excuse me, maybe you're stuck in your heart with certain things. Maybe you're stuck in your thought process of the vision of what God has called you to do. Maybe you feel stuck in your marriage. Maybe you feel stuck in, in, in parenting the, the kids that God has given us. <laughs> maybe you feel stuck in your career. And so when you come to church on Sundays and the music is loud and we're worshiping, but I think Sunday is a special Sunday because God wants to quiet the noise so you can hear him and he can hear you. Can you believe that sometimes Sundays can just be a little bit too noisy? Monday through Saturday can be noisy. Then we come to church and church can be noisy. So because we begin to judge ourselves, we begin to compare ourselves, we begin to look at other families and we begin to look at other people and we begin to look at their journey. And sometimes I think God wants to quiet the noise so that you can sit with him longer than you sit with people. 
so that you can sit with God and you can hear his voice and God can handle your thoughts even in a quiet place. See, a crock pot is quiet. It's not noisy like that microwave. <laughs> the crock pot is quiet. And God wants you, God wants your, your, your rawest thoughts in this season because once he grabs your rawest thought, he can give you the very application that you need to get unstuck. And God is saying, I'm releasing a revelation that's going to transform you. But we have, to, we have to learn how to sit with God longer than we sit with people. I'm not preaching against sitting with people. We're a church, a community here. We will always preach that. But society can push us to sit with people more than we sit with God. We sit with God first, then we sit with people because the people will give the confirmation that we already heard from God. And now we have to make sure that we're modeling this in our, in our season. So I want, you to, I want you to take these notes down and I'm going to go through them pretty quick. And then we're going to go back into worship. Because in this book right here, going into Joshua, these were a group of people who were actually stuck. They were stuck in their minds. They were stuck in their heart. Something just died. Moses just died. The very thing they were dependent on just died. But something new was rising. So if you're taking notes, here's three keys to moving forward. Because I believe your forward progress is found in your preparation. Meal prep. Number one, write this down. Prepare to forget. Prepare to forget. If you focus on what happened too long, you'll miss the opportunity of what could be right now. If you focus on what happened too long, you can miss the opportunity of what God has for you right now. Can I give you some scripture? Isaiah 43, 18 says it this way, family. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Uh -uh. God is doing a new thing. There, there's some things that we haven't got to learn how to let it go and forget so that we can make room for the new. Can, can I say it this way? My gosh, Moses, Moses, Moses was so famous for leading the people of Israel out of bondage. This is Moses. We, we love reading about Moses, but Moses has a story, right? Before Moses became famous, Moses actually, his story was filled with shame, guilt, past mistakes. And his story is filled with a lot, but I still love the fact that the story didn't end right there. That I still love that despite what he has walked through, God still used Moses to help others walk into a betterment of their story. Could it be that when Moses tried to, God, why are you choosing me? God, God, why are you picking me? Moses began to label himself and give excuses of why he should not be able to walk into the new. But God still chose Moses. God still said, I got something new that's coming towards you. And here's how Moses gets unstuck. He lets go of the past so that he can grab hold of the future. Could it be that God wants to use your greatest misery to now become your greatest ministry? Could, could it be that God wants to use the very thing that you thought that disqualified you from walking into the things of God, but God wants to actually use that to bless somebody else so that they can get out of bondage, so that they can walk into their promised land? Could it be that God wants to use you in the same mighty way? But if we hold on too long of the old and not make room for the new, we will never learn how to turn the page. And here's what God is speaking to me in this season, that there's more to your story, Anthony, that, that, that your chapter doesn't end right here, that if you turn the page, I'm giving you grace to turn the page because my ink hasn't run out. Uh, I got more chapters. I got more pages. And if, if we learn how to let go and, and grab hold of the new, you, you can see that I'm beholden and I'm getting ready to do a new thing. Does anybody believe that God is getting ready to do a new thing in here? Oh, come on, family. Do you believe that he's the way maker? 
Oh, oh do, do, do you believe that God can, can make a way out of nowhere? Do you, do you believe that God can, 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 can pave a road right in the middle of the wilderness, right in the middle uh, for your family, right in the middle uh, for your business where you're feeling that you're stuck and you can't move forward? God can meet you right where you are and pave a way. He's the way maker. He's always up to something. When we learn how to accept that we serve the creator and he's always creating, he's always has a plan. We showed up this morning and found out we had no soundboard. God was not caught off surprise. God always has a way. When we sit with him long enough, we will find out that he is the way. Number two, number two, write this down. Prepare to choose progress. Three keys of moving forward. Number two, prepare to choose progress. I wrote this in my notes. If you don't schedule your victories, your defeats will schedule you. If you don't schedule your victories, let me say it again, your defeats will always schedule you. Choosing progress is choosing commitment. I, I, I'm choosing to progress in this area. I, I'm choosing to grab hold of the plan. And, and, and I'm choosing to grab hold of the way that God has laid out for me. But I'm going to choose my progress in this way because when I choose my progress, here's what I'm saying to myself. I will be committed to this. A commitment to crossing over or moving forward requires a clear direction from the word of God. Let me prove it to you in the scriptures, family. Watch this. Go with me. Psalms 119, 133 says this. Establish my footsteps in your word and do not let iniquity have dominion over me. Establish my footsteps in your word, not my word, not my preference, not my opinion, not what my family says. Come on. Not what my job says. Come on, somebody, talk back to me. Not what society says, but I will be established by his word. So now when I don't understand what my next step looks like, I can't run to the buffet. I have to run to the way. Because we can find ourselves sitting at the wrong tables looking for the way, looking for the healing, looking for transformation, looking for revelation. But the revelation is not found at the world. The revelation is found at his table. His table is his word. So if you're looking to be established in this season, family, Anthony, if you're looking to be established in this season, we got to sit with his word more. Sit in his word and allow his word to choose the way. See, he says he went, when, when, when God was speaking to Joshua and he said, the land that I'm giving you is already blessed. I love that God said that I'm giving it to you, but you have to go possess it. It's, it's given to you, catch it family, it's given to you, but there's still an application of possession -ness that you have to do in order to grab hold of what God has for you. It doesn't just fall in your lap. You have to choose the way. So, there's the way. so what does that mean? On Monday, I'm choosing God's way. On Wednesday, when I'm feeling defeated, I'm choosing God's way. I, I'm choosing to dive in my word. I, I'm choosing to spend some time with, with, with community. Even when I'm feeling defeated, I'm choosing to be accountable, to pick up the phone and call somebody and say, hey, pray for me because I'm struggling right now. I, I, I'm choosing the way. Why? Because I want progress in this area. What does the way look like for you in this season of your life? Jesus found himself in a garden and he said, God, not, not my way. Come on, somebody. Not, not, not my will, but your will. 
choose the way. When you schedule progress, you are saying you expect to move forward. Number three, as we get ready to close out, it says prepare to flavor your future. Prepare to flavor your future. It's time to put some flavor on your future with God's word. Your future begins when you discuss your future more than you can, more than you discuss your past. Your future begins when you discuss your future more than you discuss your past. Use your words to build your future family. Use your words to create what you believe that God has been speaking to you. Your words are powerful. Matter of fact, it says it this way in Proverbs 18. Come on, we know the scripture. Death and life are in the power of your tongue. You are a working, you are, you are under construction. You are a construction worker at all times. You have the ability to create with your words. So when you're in a transition season, God has called you to use your words to create. And here's what's so powerful about you. And here's what's so powerful what, about Joshua, who was a leader in his time, who were called to lead millions out of bondage. And I believe God has a calling on you as well. The enemy will love to mute the leader when it's time to transition. Maybe you're in a season right now where God, where, where, I mean, where the enemy has been trying to mute you. Maybe you're in a season right now where the enemy has been trying to put a muzzle on your mouth. I pray right now that God gives you the strength to keep speaking. I pray right now that God gives, puts a song in your mouth to keep singing. Why? Because you're just not singing for yourself. You're singing for a whole family that's behind you. You're singing for your friends. Come on, somebody. You're, you're singing for your neighbor. You're, you're singing for your coworker. There's so many that's looking to cross over. And when you begin to speak, that's the dominion that you're walking into. But that's also the dominion that you're helping somebody else to cross over. So just touch your heart right now. And even as David said, creating me a new heart. I believe God is making room for the newness of the passion to keep going. The passion to not give up. The passion to understand the why of why the enemy is attacking me, but also understand the why I can't quit right here. I got to cross over. I got to step into more. I, I got to use my faith to move this mountain, Lord God. I, I got to, I don't, I can't use the fear right now. We said it last week, fear creates mountains, but faith moves them. And as you open up your mouth, speak to that mountain and say, mountain, you, you can't stay in this season of my life. I, I got to cross over. I, I got to get to the other side. I, I got to get over there because there, there's more to my story. There's more to my story. As I get ready to close out, I want to remind somebody today, in the middle of worship, God said this to me. He said, Anthony, tell him that I'm proud of him. I'm proud of you. Your father's proud of you. I don't know who, who's that for today, for our online family, but your father's saying he sees you and he's proud of you. That you're not giving up, that you still have curiosity, holy curiosity of his way. That you didn't chose the other option, but that you're still pressing in his way. See, I want to remind you as we get ready to close out. I love this in 2 Timothy 1 and 6. 
It says, therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is in you through the land of the hands. If I could just give you some context here, here, here's the beautiful thing about this family. I love when Paul was encouraging Timothy here, but actually you read a little bit of scriptures ahead. This is after Paul reminds Timothy about his mother and his grandmother. That he, that he said, remind that there were some individuals in your life that influenced you even while you're here right now. So before I tell you to stir up what's inside of you, I want you to know that there have been some people praying for you. There have been some people influencing you. There have been some people who have came alongside of you that's come in calling you and pushing you. So my friend, my brother, my sister, I want to remind you today, here's the reason why you're going to be able to cross over. There have been some people praying for you. There have been some people that's been speaking on your life right now. And just as God is happy and proud of you, there's been some people praying for you. We can stand to our feet. So here's what we do today. We stir up the gift. We stir up the gift that's inside of us. Stir it up with faith. Stir it up with prayer. Stir it up with the word of God. Come on, family, stir it up. Because in order to release something, you have got to get in a posture of stirring it. And God is saying, as you choose the right ingredients in this season, it is time to stir it up. No more sitting on your gifts. No more of, of, of wasting the ingredients that God has given you. You have the ingredients inside of you to cross over. Meal prep. Choose wisely. Choose the right ingredients. It's inside of you. It's, it's inside of you. Close your eyes right now. Just begin to pray over yourself and put your mind. And you know what, God? It's inside of me. That's what Paul was telling Timothy right here. The laying of the hands has already happened. The gift is inside of you. The gift is not coming. It's already inside of you. And all you have to do right now is get connected with God and begin to stir it up right now. Begin to stir it up with your faith so that what's inside of you can be released so that you can cross over to your next. I believe you're in a crossover season. I believe God is strengthening you to take that step. What does that step look like? Heavenly Father, we love you. We honor you. We thank you for today. Today is a pivot Sunday. Today is an unorthodox Sunday. But I believe today is a day where we come and we acknowledge the stirring up of the gift. That we acknowledge that we have the right ingredients to take the necessary step that you have called us to take. That you have placed inside of us the very thing that we need. So we honor you in that space. We're, we're grateful in that space and we sit at your feet today. We're in a meal prep season. And we will continue to prep so that we can take the next step. We love you. We honor you. It's in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody say amen.